Hey guys, welcome to another video of your favorite cloud learning platform, K21 Academy, where you learn cloud from the experts. In this video, our expert trainer will be covering orchestrating data movement with Azure Data Factory. We have taken this clip from our step-by-step -step learning program on data engineering on Microsoft Azure DP203. Guys, make sure you watch the entire video so you can avail the free gift at the very end. Now, let's hear from an expert. Hey guys, how are you? Now, coming to model number seven. In model number seven, we'll talk about Azure Data Factory and how do we orchestrate data movement. In this particular module, we have three lessons. We'll talk about introduction to Azure Data Factory. What is the meaning of Data Factory? What components are there? Then in the third lesson, we'll talk about integration of Data Factory with Databricks. Now, coming to lesson number one, introduction to Azure Data Factory. Now in this lesson, we'll talk about what is data factory, what is a data factory process, what are various data factory components, and how do we secure data factory. Azure Data Factory is a managed cloud service that is built for complex hybrid, extract, transform, load, ETL, and extract, load, transform, ELT processes. It creates, orchestrates, and automates the movement, transformation, or analysis of the data in the cloud. In the data factory process, we connect and collect data from various sources, we transform and enrich the data, we publish the pipeline, and then we monitor it. Now, as part of data factory components, we have data set, linked services, activities, and pipeline. So let's start from the pipeline. Pipeline is the combination of everything where you have multiple activities which are orchestrated, and these activities might be parent or child activities, and they execute in one order. Whenever scheduled or triggered, the entire pipeline execute. So let us now understand other three with one example. Imagine you have a database A and database B. So you want to copy some data from database A into database B. So to do so, you will use one type of activity called copy activity. Copy activity is not the only one. We have many more type of activities. Copy activity will copy my data from source into sync location. But how will I connect? How will I provide the configuration settings that I want to read my data from database A into database B? So to provide that configuration information, you will create linked services. You will create two linked service. One linked service will be connecting to the database A and the second linked service will connect to database B. So linked service is nothing more than the configuration settings over there, the URL that we are reading from SQL A and that's the FQDN of it and we are writing into SQL B and that's the FQDN of it and which username and password do we need to use when we are doing this copy activity when we are extracting data and loading it over there so that all of that is part of linked service. Now the third option over there is called as data set. So in database A and database B from where we are pulling the data and, and we are loading the data, there might be tables available, table A and table B. So you have to represent that somehow in the data factory configuration. You have to say that, okay, I'm reading from table A and writing in table B. So the name of that service or what you, what you are going to create is a data set. So you will say source data set and in source data set, you will select table A as part of sync data set, you will select table B. And when in the end, when everything is configured and you run the pipeline, data will be pulled from the table A and will be written into table B. There will be multiple employees in the team, which is taking care of the data factory pipeline. However, all of them will not have the same rights. So based on their job profile, we give them, give them specific roles and rights. So one such right, which is use is called as Azure Data Factory Contributor Role. Any user who is having Azure Data Factory Contributor Role will be able to create, edit, and delete Data Factory, child resources, including data set, link service, pipeline, trigger, integration runtime. He or she will be able to deploy the resource using resource manager templates and will be able to manage application insight alert for Data Factory. And this user can also deploy these templates on a resource group level or subscription level and will be able to create support tickets. So I have a couple of questions over here and the first question depends on the process of Data Factory. So which Azure Data Factory process involves using compute services to produce data to feed production environment with cleansed data? Answer will be transform and enrich part. Which Azure Data Factory component contains the transformation logic or the analysis command of Azure Data Factory work? Answer will be activities. Now coming to lesson number two. In lesson number two, we'll learn about data factory components. In this lesson, we'll talk more about linked services, data set, data factory activity, and pipelines. 
So basically in Azure Data Factory, we have linked services, triggers are there, pipeline and data set. So with the help of linked service, we connect to various data stores. Data store can be Azure Data Lake, Storage Account, Data Bricks, SQL Database, Synapse or any other thing as such. With the help of trigger, now triggers can be on schedule, can be event based triggers or can be triggered manually as well. So whenever you trigger the pipeline, it executes and whatever activities are there, all of them executes in one flow like that. And data set is just the representation of the data in the real data store. And uh, in the end, if there is any error in the monitoring section, we go and we check it out. Now data factory activities can be of multiple types as such. We can have data movement activity like copy activity, which moves data from one location to another. We also have data transformation activities. Data transformation activities use compute resources to change or enhance data through transformation or it can call a compute resource to perform an analysis of the data. By using control activity, we can control flow of the orchestration and it includes chaining of activities, sequencing, branching, defining parameters at the pipeline level or by we can also pass arguments while invoking the pipeline on demand or from a trigger. Pipeline is a grouping of activities which are logically related to each other and pipeline can be scheduled so the activities within the pipeline will be executed and while during the execution if there is any error we can also monitor that. Now coming over to lesson number three. In lesson number three we talk about ingesting and transforming data. In this lesson we talk about how to set up data factory, ingest data using copy activity and transforming data with mapping data flow. By creating data factory, you have to provide the name of data factory. Version two will be default, subscription, resource, group name, location, and you can click on enable Git configuration later. So whenever we use the copy activity behind the scenes, multiple things happen. So data is read from the source and it is written in the sync and between that serialization and deserialization happens, compression, decompression, column mapping, and so on and so forth. So all of this depends on the configuration which we have given as part of input and output data set. A lot of professionals using Azure Data Factory are not having expertise in Python or any other transformational language such as Scala. So keeping that in mind, Microsoft created mapping data flow. Now mapping data flow is code free. You don't have to code, but you can still do the transformation using the business logic or the data transformation logic. In the lab, we will be using mapping data flow at one point and we will use the GUI over there to drag and drop and complete the configuration and we'll pull some data from HTTP location and we'll transform it and we'll write into Azure Synapse Analytics. Now a couple of questions over here guys. These are FII questions. We have not discussed them yet. In the lab, we'll do it. So which transformation in the mapping data flow is used to route data rows to different stream based on matching condition? It's called as conditional split. How do we load data into data store using mapping data flow? Answer will be, there is literally a thing called a sync, guys. So we use sync to write the data into sync. Now coming to lesson number four. In lesson number four, we'll talk about integration of data factory with Azure Databricks. So in this lesson, we talk about how do we create data factory? How do we ingest data? What is storage account? And how do we orchestrate uh, the connectivity between Azure Data Factory and Databricks? Basically, when we use Data Factory and Azure Databricks together, you need to have some location where data will be there. So you can create a storage account to do so. Then you can create a Data Factory where the pipeline will be created. And uh, once the pipeline is created, make one uh, workbook in Data Bricks. Now, once the workbook is created, you can drop one activity in Data Factory called as Notebook Activity. And that Notebook Activity, when will execute, will perform the data analysis task, which is written inside the workbook in Data Bricks. So from the previous models, we already know how to create a storage account. So you can fill up the wizard to make the storage account and data factory instance. Now in Azure Databricks, you have to create the notebook and inside the notebook, you can put the transformation logic. Now you can open the activity guide and let's go to the lab and we will create one data factory and we'll create pipelines inside that. We have put on everything about the certification and a lot more on this 12 week roadmap that we have created for you if you are preparing for Microsoft Azure Data Engineer Certification DP203. On week number one, we start with explore, compute and storage options for data engineering workloads. Then on week two, we cover run interactive queries using Azure Synapse Analytics serverless SQL pools. On week number three, we cover data exploration and transformation in Azure Databricks. On week number four, we cover 
explore, transform, and load data into Data Warehouse using Apache Spark. On week number five, we cover ingest and load data into Data Warehouse. On week number six, we cover transform data with Azure Data Factory or Azure Synapse Pipelines. On week number seven, we cover orchestrate data movement and transformation in Azure Synapse Pipelines. On week number eight, we cover end-to-end -end security with Azure Synapse Analytics. On week number nine, we cover support hybrid transactional analytical processing with Azure Synapse Link. On week number 10, we cover real-time stream processing with Stream Analytics. On week number 11, we cover create a stream processing solution with Event Hubs and Azure Databricks. By week 11, we are pretty confident that you are ready for the certification exam. So to top it all off, on week number 12, we help you with some tips and resources for clearing certification and CV preparation along with some exam questions and interview questions. Guys, this is an excellent training program that we have created specially to meet your needs as you are preparing for the certification exam. If you are interested in this training program, then I would highly recommend you to go and attend a free class on Microsoft Azure Data Engineer Certification. In this free class, we will be covering what is Azure Data Engineer role and exam DP203, why everyone is working on data currently, important Azure services you should learn, and there is going to be a live demo as well on Azure Synapse Analytics components. To register for this free class, go at k21academy.com slash Azure DE02. Then select an event date, your name, your email ID, your phone number, and then click on Yes, Save My Seat. Once you click on this button, you will be redirected to this particular page. That means you have successfully registered for this free class. Now, guys, I'll see you guys directly at the free class.